Welcome back to Africa Boxing, edition number four, right here on Fox Sports Africa. And uh, this is the fight I'm looking forward to, one of the things I was talking about earlier. I've known this young man quite a while, this Ochin from, uh, from Kenya. He's got an unbelievable record when you think about it. He's had 23 fights, he's had 16 wins, and six losses and one draw. He's up against a South African, uh, Uncle Tolly. Uncle Tolly is an interesting boxer. He's a very useful fella. Um, but he's only had the six fights and he's won all six. Look at the advantage he's got. Height advantage of 186 centimeters over 160. And likewise, a little, little different in the, in the reach as well. That could play all the difference. Boys are weighed in almost the same sort of weight. Very little in it, half a kilo. Um, so I'm looking forward to this. Let's get them into the ring and see what happens, shall we? Brian. All right, this international battleweight contest is scheduled for six rounds. So let's bring the guys in right now. Kenya's very own Gabriel Ocheng. Here we go. His opponent all the way from South Africa, Siko Nkakole. All right, so the judges for this international bantamweight contest scheduled for six rounds are Edwin Yakeri, Bruno Nyati, and Patrick Estazen. So before I introduce the referee to you now, let's introduce you to the fighters. He's fighting out of the blue corner. He weighed in at 52.75 kilograms. He's wearing the red trunks with a white trim. 23 contested fights, 16 wins, six losses, and one draw. He goes by the name of Gabriel Ochieng. His opponent. Weighed in at 53.35 kilograms. He's wearing the red and black trunks. His record is six and six. All the way from South Africa, by the name of Sequence, Siko in Klotlole. And your referee is none other than referee Wally Snowball. Boxers. Take this off quickly. Take it off. <laughs> now, guys, I want a good clean fight. Protect yourselves at all times. Okay, shake hands. Good luck. Interesting fight. This. Looking forward to it. The man with the experience against a young man that's really going places from South Africa. Siko Nokoli. And I'm looking forward to this. One. I really am, Mick. This is Gabriel Ocheng from Kenya Box. in the red trunks against the man from South Africa in the, well, I suppose you can call them dark grey with a red stripe down, the, down each side. And, uh, of course, 
Oh, Chiang, in case you hadn't noticed, is a southpaw. He leads with the right, in other words. Got a lot of experience. You can see the experience too, can't you? Just nice and compact, the Kenyan boy. That's what he needs to do, use more of that, the height and the reach. Like at the let's time go, that uh, McCauley, right, step back. McCauley doesn't look like he has quite got used to this southpaw, the, the the right jab rather than the left jab. He looks like he's probably used to fighting an orthodox fighter. Mm -hmm. He just he's a little bit off. He's feeling a bit awkward at the moment. He is, yeah, and I think that could be the only thing about it. I think he's got the talent. You can see he has, but uh, he's not using the reach that he should right, have. There. Stop, stop. Box. That 186 centimeter reach of his. Should be jabbing through there. I think he's worried about the left, the right rather from Ocheng. Let go, let go. Break, step back. Stop holding. Wally Snowball, very experienced referee. South Africa has done a lot of fights in his time. Well, it's certainly been an interesting first three minutes, no doubt about that. I think uh, Ocheng seems to have just probably shaded it, but only just. Could have gone either way. I think, I think both are sizing themselves up. Um, Ochiang, who's got the experience, and the young man in Kotoli, um, who's battling a bit, I think, with the sort of South Pole approach of uh, uh, Ochiang. Um, it could be interesting as the, as the fight grows. Um, the young man, he's only 23, Ochiang is 32, so he's got a bit of experience, so he will size his opponent and then try and see whether he can go for him or not. But uh, with the South Pole, with the South Pole um, uh, action and approach, it's gonna be difficult for him. Yeah, it's confused, I think. It's all we can say there, really. Just a little confusion. Alan Tawil's trying to Second get him to, to, uh, two. a little bit of information and say, come on, just slow it down. Just, you know he's a South Pole. I've been doing this in the gym with you <laughs> for a couple of weeks now. Let's get used to it. But, uh, right jab by the Kenyan you can see there that's in the red red trunks that's the south ball we're talking south ball action we're talking in the unorthodox style that's better from the south right, from the uh, south african let's go, let's go. Right, step back. it's amazing how Ochien just back. knows when to tie right, him up right. it's a real professional approach this is a learning curve isn't it from kudolu Toli. Little windmill action there from uh, Ochieng, the Kenyan boy. Let's go, let's go. He fights out the uh, Pow Pow gym in Nairobi.
ironically. Oh and ironically, he, Ochieng, I saw him fight in one of our very first bill, actually, in uh, Nairobi. He fought against uh, Fadili uh, Majija, who you're about to see in the championship fight early in the next uh, fight we have on the bill tonight. And Ochieng did that was at the Crown Plaza Hotel in, in Kenya, Nairobi. Let go. The last time I saw him fight, but I'd seen him a couple of times before that. He fought uh, had a long career when you think about it. He's 32 years of age. Wily character, understands his way, knows his way around the boxing world. As you can see by that, the way he just stepped, sidestepped, and threw the right. That's uh, a fall rather than a knockdown. And the uh, referee says just brush those gloves off they've been on the canvas you don't know what you've picked up and you don't want it to go into the boxer's eyes for those of you not too sure what that action's all about break stay back stay back listen come here we're not talking to listen okay when i say stop you break box that's what he's got to do don't get ragged. Get that left jab going. He's got a longer reach. There it is again. Come on, come in behind it. The South African just has to do that more. Finish, finish strong. Stop. Yep, interesting uh, fight that. Probably Ochim might have just shaded it, but only just. Not much to write home about, Ick. Yeah, they're finding difficulty getting through the punches, uh, through the defenses. Um, you can see Ochi Yang is trying to distract uh, his opponent with that windmill action of his, but uh, not landing the punches that he wants to land. And uh, the South African is also battling. Um, he doesn't quite yet, he hasn't quite yet found a way to get past the South Pole. Which is silly, really, because he's got away, and it's called a reach. Mm. And that's the point. And when you saw him did, using his left, coming through and jabbing, at the end of the day, that's what will, could make the difference, in my opinion, in this fight. It could be the jab of the South African that could outreach uh, the Kenyan and Second therefore out, score better points. Let's wait three. and see as we move into round number three, this. Gabriel Ochicheng from uh, Kenya and the South African Siko Nokotoli. That's better than the South African. Gosh, looked like a bit of cum dancing there for a moment, didn't it? They were, where they were dragging each other around. To set that to music would have been interesting. trying an interesting look as we go into the final minute of this round number three of this 
international bantamweight contest. Try to look at the tactics from both boxers. And I can't really see any continuity of tactics from the big tall man from South Africa. He does not get that left going, which is probably going to be his downfall in the end if he's not careful, because it means he's not scoring enough points. The man with the shorter reach, 167 compared with 186, is scoring more points with his jab, and that shouldn't be happening, except maybe the confusion of that southpaw right hand coming through is causing problems to the South African. Break, stay back, stay back. Oh, here Well, end of round number three. Ochien probably just shading, but there's very little in it. Could have gone either way, Ick. Yeah, there's not too many punches being landed. No. Um, you know, they, they still seem to be sizing themselves up. Um, Kotoli um, seems to be struggling. He's trying to move his head around, trying to get away from the punches from Ochien, but uh, it's not much as far as throwing your punches is concerned. They are missing most, aren't they? That's the point. It's all ragged, very ragged. When you think how we've had a really great fight earlier, and this one's a little bit ragged, you can't quite get yourself into it, can you? The uh, great fight from the uh, earlier round, which was uh, Okaketsi against Mortabedi, that was the best fight of the evening, Second no doubt out. about this. Round number four. This one, I'm afraid, is not living up to what I thought it would be. It's your corner. Box. Ochi Eng from Kenya and Siko Nokotoli from South Africa. Ochien should easily have the stamina. He's gone Break, for a Pan-African title before, 12 rounds, done a couple of those, a couple of 10 round rounders, so there shouldn't, he shouldn't run out of steam. Stop. And you can see by that, Stop. as referee Wally Stop. Snowball just says to him, none of that, come on now, don't hang on to the Stop. man Holy. like that. Using, yeah, the well, arm, well, well, well. using the forearm, he can't do that. Don't do that. Can't do that. That's right. Wally Snowball says, Box. "Don't do that." He's right. You know what it's like at this moment. If you watch the watch the the punches, there's very little actually following through. It's almost like they throw a punch and it lands on lands on the fighter, but it doesn't go through the fighter, if you know what I mean? It, the distances are just out. And they don't quite get where they are. Yeah, they're too far away from each other, and they just... The punch is not going through with the fight and through with the punch into, the, uh, into their opponents, both boxers. Now they get closer, it's a bit better, but no one's really landing and scoring punches, because on each other's arms at the moment. That's a better punch from Nokotoli. Uh, it's more slapping though, isn't it? It's not landing good punches. Gosh. That's a better one. Let's go, let's oh, I'm going to hang on now. Watching just going into his dance routine with half a minute to go. Might be a better round for the South African, but only just. Stop. 
up. Yes, I, I might just put that down to the South African, just squares things up a bit. I still think that the Kenyan is probably ahead on points at the moment. Not really exciting, Not Barry. at all. Not exciting at all. Both boxes running away from each other. Um, punches they're trying to land are not landing sliding off the body punches are landing on on, on the, the gloves of each other um it's a boring one um difficult one to score um unlike uh, the bagawasi fight yeah. that was a bit exciting it brought about the excitement in the crowd the crowd's just sort of gone very yeah. very dull quiet, and low it? very quiet very quiet very quiet, obviously, because of Kenyan and South African in the ring as well. You've not got a, you've not got the actual uh, home, home crowd uh, wishing, of course, that their Botswana boy does well. Second so, so let's see how we go. Round We're now going five. to round number five of the scheduled six-round fight. It's an international bantamweight contest. In the red shorts is uh, Gabriel Ochien from Kenya. And in the black, or should I say dark gray, and red striped shorts is Siko Nokotoli from uh, South Africa. Experienced man, 23 contests, 16 wins, six losses and a draw. That's the Kenyan in the red shorts. And six wins, six fights, six fights, six wins. But Wally Snow was creeping up behind him there. He wondered what was happening. <laughs> Who's that behind me, he said. Uh, better Strike, step back step back step back All he's got to put some weight behind these punches. Just a little bit out of out of uh, reach. And he's got the longest reach. Nakatoli might just have shaded this. With uh, 50 seconds right, left. He's going to get Let's told go. by the referee to stop. Stop pushing away with your elbow. Stop. Yes, that's right. You're holding. That's right. Stop holding, and you're pushing away with your elbow. So both boxers at fault for different offences. That's better. Didn't land. Didn't score much, but it's at least he's got the punches moving. That's a better one. Got through. A flurry with a few seconds left. He didn't impress the judges, but he didn't impress me, I can assure you. Nokatodi might well have just got that one. But I must admit, Ick, you have to go along with exactly what you said a few moments ago or three minutes ago. What a boring fight. The tactics, the <laughs> tactics they approach, uh, they're approaching the fight with. It's unbelievable. They're both running away from each other instead of getting into the contest, coming closer, trying to land punches. They're just not landing the punches. Everything's landing on the gloves. And obviously, they're not scoring points or anything like that. We go into the final round. It's the sixth round of this contest. It's been so boring. It certainly has. And I think, actually, if we uh, talk about that, the way it is, and you were quite right, that they actually just... The distance is just growing bigger between the two boxes, which means they can't land any tallying punches. 
And remember, the judges have got a hell of a job on there, if you think about it, trying to score this Second ball because this there's no real big punches round. being thrown Boxes and no dominance again. by either fighter. Mm. So into okay. the sixth round we go. And quite honestly, you probably might well think that if somebody comes out and dominates this next three minutes, there's a great possibility they could win this fight. to showboat and if you haven't got the skill to showboat that's a bit silly and uh, Nokatoli doesn't need to showboat he needs to get on and be a professional boxer and get that left jab going and the right hook do the combinations do work on the, what he's got as a little bit of talent get closer to his opponent and make them tell he's not doing that it's all well and good jumping around on the spot and being nice clever Ooh. slipped into the corner above us oh sorry about that that's better click that left out should have been doing that since round one he hasn't been doing that at all Ooh. Ooh. He thought it was the elbow, I think, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. This has brought the crowd alive and he brought the boxer alive. I think he's annoyed. <laughs> if nothing else. Gosh, why did he do that in the second round? of the elbow of Ocheng. Certainly stirred Uncatoli up a bit, didn't it? So we just 10 seconds to go, moving into there, and it's the final, final moments of this, what has been a boring bantamweight contest. Ocheng might well have lost that. And he won't uh, be happy about going all the way home to Kenya with that particular fight. So let's, my opinion, I think the uh, South African lad probably won that. Um, puts him into uh, seven wins. Remember, he won five by knockout, his, first, his previous six fights. And quite honestly, he didn't ever look like knocking anybody out tonight. And uh, unfortunately, probably one of the most boring fights we've seen for quite some time. Oh, you know, Ocheng's antics, playful antics, I would say, and this final run almost cost him. Um, he nearly get caught by the South African. And uh, he's lucky, I think, to finish on his feet. Um, like you say, the South African may have shaded it, but I won't be surprised if the ref uh, referees um, uh, or the judges call it a draw. Yep. Yeah, it's got that. It's got that about him. And that's the bit where he's moaning about the elbow. Uh, going through, although it was accidental, I don't think it was deliberate, been deliberate about a point topped away from him. Look, it's a slapping punch, that, isn't it? It's not got any power, it's not a closed fist, it doesn't come through, it's a slap. Mm. You know, it, 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 that, he didn't really get caught there. He did. Yes. And that's where he, he was off balance, wasn't he, when he moved across there, that was the point. But at the end of the day, I'm afraid, it looks as though I think that uh, the South African, Siku, Nukhtoli 
could well have won this, but it will be very, very marginal, I can assure you. And Gabriel Ocherin, it could have gone either way, um, and it would be very tight, I would think. The judges probably had difficulty separating the boredom in that particular fight, the fighters. So I think Wally Snowball seemed to be very tired, appreciating the fighters. Yeah, I think he was fed up. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's seen better fights than that in his day, I can assure you. There's a man with incredible experience. You saw the way he had experience there. He was walking towards the camera, realized he was going towards that camera, moved off. A referee that with no experience wouldn't even know that that camera was live. So there we are. So the judges, Mr. Uh, Kedi, Nayati, and Estherhazen have now got to do their job they've done just that they've uh, given the points in to the to gerald ramsden the uh, official from the wba who is here and they're now adding them up probably quite difficult i would think to separate them probably but they've uh, i've just got i've got uh, um, Kutoli in head but let's see what happens wally snowball just checks it and see what he thinks he hands them now to the ring announcer, Mr. Brian Mortar, who would give us the result. Right, the judges have scored this fight as follows. Judge Edwin Keddy scores the fight 55-59. Bruno Nyati scores the fight 54-60. Patrick Estazen scores the fight 56-58. The winner. The winner by unanimous decision, Siko Inkhatole! So that's the way I saw it, was uh, literally the South African winning that fight. Bigger margin by uh, Noyati, he sits on the other side of the ring, but the referee or the judge sitting next to me, Mr. East has had it 56-58, and I had it 57-58. So maybe we saw it a little bit differently on this particular side of the ring. So big fight coming up. The big fight, of course, we're waiting for. And we'll be back for international WBA Pan-African featherweight title fight over 12 rounds between the Tanzania boxer, Fahili Majija, who in fact beat uh, Gabriel Ocheng in the, the last fight, the fight that was there, he beat him, and Rafiwi Mayema from South Africa. There's the war child from Soweto in South Africa. We'll be back for that in just a moment. All right.